I need a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh no, definitely not you. Now we mix it all together and... I can't believe it. Have I done it? The greatest Rocket League settings of all time. Hey, what's up guys? Calvin here. Now, Rocket League settings can be pretty confusing, and there's honestly a lot to take in. There's just so many different options and different ways to play the game, so it's hard to figure out what to do. Well, thanks to camera settings data from RLCS pros, YouTubers, and freestylers, I have created the ultimate settings guide that can help players at any rank improve. Make sure to watch the entire video to get the complete best settings, but feel free to skip around to the timestamps in the video for specific guidelines. Also, remember that the best possible setting is unlocked once you hit that like and subscribe button, so go do that right now. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Gameplay settings don't really change much, but before you skip past this part, there are a few very important tips I can give you about these settings. First, if you find yourself getting super tilted by game chat, or you spend more time typing than playing the actual game, turn text chat off to focus on the game better and save your poor, poor blood pressure. Second, if you have a laggy connection or you consistently get ping spikes, try changing your input buffer from default to STS or CSTS. This does not work for everyone, but it's definitely worth trying out if your connection is poo poo. Now, these settings can make or break your game. If you're still using default settings, this video is gonna change your life. Camera settings are the foundation of your gameplay, and it's super important that you get the optimal settings tailored to your playstyle. Let's go over camera presets really quick. Yes, presets can give you your favorite pro settings, which are usually very good. But that does not mean these are the best settings for you. The benefit of choosing custom settings is that it allows you to find out which settings will help you play the best, not your favorite pro. With that being said, let's talk about camera shake. Turn this off immediately, it's a terrible setting. All it does is make your screen shake a lot and make it much harder to focus on the game. Every single pro player has this setting off, so just please uncheck this box. Moving on to FOV, this determines how much of the field you can see. With that in mind, you want to crank this bad boy up to the max. 69% of pros have it on 110 for a reason. It allows you to get the most vision of the game, giving you quicker reactions and more spatial awareness. You don't want to handicap yourself with a lower FOV, because other players will have this setting maxed out, and they'll take advantage of your lack of vision on the field. You can try having it at a lower value for preference, but it's recommended to keep the setting at 110. Now for distance, this controls how close or far your camera is to your car. Distance do's and don'ts. Do have your distance set around 260 to 280 for optimal gameplay. Don't have your distance maxed out because it works in Fortnite. You don't want to have to use binoculars just to be able to see your car on the screen. Do tweak your settings according to your preference. I personally have it at 270, but it's about 50-50 between 270 and 280 for most pros. Don't lower your distance all the way down, unless you're trying to freestyle. Also, if your distance is this close, I question your motivations behind it. Height. This controls how high the camera is above your car. The main goal with a successful height setting is to have a clear view of both your car and the field. This setting is pretty self-explanatory, and you want to have this between 90 and 110. However, this setting is a little more up to personal preference than FOV and distance, so definitely try tweaking it and find out where you're comfortable. Now onto camera angle. This changes the angle at which your camera points towards your car. Most players in the Rocket League community tend to agree that an angle of negative 3 to negative 5 is pretty standard for all players. Now, I will say that most pros have this setting around negative 3, but I personally prefer an angle of negative 4. Really, again, it's all up to preference, so use this video as a reference for your own personal settings. Now, stiffness is a very overlooked setting, but it's actually super important to make sure that you can follow the game to the best of your ability. Stiffness controls how much your camera moves when your car changes momentum. Having a high stiffness means your camera is essentially stuck to your car, while a low stiffness means your camera is super fluid and all over the place. Now, most pros have this around 0.3 to 0.5, but there's a bunch of variation in stiffness settings, so pretty much any setting would work. Finally, swivel speed and transition speed. These settings control how fast your controlled camera moves around the car, and honestly, you could just leave these settings alone. In Rocket League, you rarely move your camera around until you get into the very high ranks, as there's just not really that much purpose to it. 
One tip I can give you with this setting though is to try and have it as high as you can possibly handle without losing control. Now here are my camera settings as a reference. Pause this video if you want to try these out. Controller settings are arguably the most important settings in the game. Being able to control your car effectively for your own playstyle can make the difference between being a mechanical god or a mechanical frog. <coughs> Calvin, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I don't even know. It just, it just rhymes. Now, let's go over the four main controller settings. Steering sensitivity, aerial sensitivity, controller dead zone, and dodge dead zone. Steering sensitivity changes how sensitive your car is to joystick movements. Having a high steering sensitivity means your car will turn extremely quickly and be super responsive to all your movements. A low sensitivity means your car will turn a lot slower and be more controlled. Now, Rocket League is not Fortnite or COD. Having a high sensitivity does not actually make you a better player. In most cases, it will actually harm you. You want to be able to have the most possible control over your car while still maintaining speed in your adjustments. For most high level Rocket League players, they would agree that a sensitivity anywhere between 1.3 to 2.5 would be optimal, but I will note that most pros have a sense under 2.0. Now, aerial sensitivity works the same way as steering sensitivity, except in the air. It is imperative that you have both settings at the same value. This makes it so that you aren't confused by two different sensitivities when going up for an aerial play. Alright, let's talk about controller dead zone. This is similar to steering sensitivity in that it changes how responsive your controller is to inputs. If you have a really high dead zone, you have to jam your joystick super far from the center to register movement. If you have a really low dead zone, you will most likely get controller drift. This is when you aren't touching your joystick at all, but your car or camera is still turning. This happened to me for about two seasons before I realized my controller dead zone was too low. Now, for optimal settings, you want to have this as low as possible without seeing controller drift. For most players, this is around 0.08, but every controller is different, so definitely test different settings. Finally, dodge dead zone. Listen up, if you are consistently backflipping when going up for aerials, or you are double jumping too much when trying to flip, it's most likely because your dead zone is too low or too high. The range you should be aiming for with dodge dead zone is anywhere from 0.65 to 0.8. I have mine on the higher end with 0.75 because I just hate accidentally backflipping. But it's really up to you which setting you want to go with. Oh, bonus tip is to turn off controller vibration. Just please save your poor controller's batteries. You will thank me later. Now, here are my controller settings as a reference. Again, pause the video if you want to try these out. Having the perfect controller key button sets you up for infinite improvement in your gameplay. You want to have the best settings possible right now so you don't have to spend hundreds of hours relearning the same mechanics with new controls. Now, there are a few general guidelines that all players need to follow in order to get the most possible control from your keybinds. Now, I'm going to base my guidelines off of the default controls so you can see what to adjust from there. First of all, you need to make sure that you can press all basic controls at the same time. This means you need to be able to boost, jump, and either power slide, air roll, or drive forwards all at the same time. Now, a lot of players can't jump and boost at the same time with default controls. Since they're so close to each other, sometimes it's hard to be able to press both. A good solution is to move your boost button to right bumper or even square or X on your controller. This is a much more optimal position for your thumb, and it allows you to get much more control over your car. Another guideline you should follow is to bind regular air roll and power slide to the same button. This just frees up so much space on your controller, and it allows you to have much quicker recoveries because you can just hold that one button. For reference, most pros have this button bound to left bumper. Finally, you need to bind a directional air roll. As the game becomes more and more mechanical, it is essential that you can adapt and improve with each season. Holding yourself back by not binding this button now means you'll be setting yourself up for thousands of hours of relearning and effort. Now I did a full video on this if you want to check it out, but I'll briefly summarize it here. You need to have at least one directional air roll bound and your regular air roll bound. Choosing one over the other means you lose out on so much of the benefits you could be getting by binding both. You can recover and adjust extremely accurately with your regular air roll, and you can have insane car control with directional air roll. Now it really does not matter which direction you choose to bind, but I would go with air roll left, since a bunch more players use that, and you can follow my other video much easier. 
A good bind for directional air roll would be on one of your bumpers. I personally have air roll left on my right bumper and regular air roll on my left bumper. Sort of weird to think about, but again, it's all up to preference. With your key binds, you want to keep all of your central controls on different finger inputs. Your jump button should be pressed by one finger, your boost button pressed by another, and your drive button pressed yet again by another finger. This is the most optimal way to play, as you get so much more minute control. Video settings are the main way you can drastically improve your gameplay capacity. Now what this means is that having good settings for your specific console and abilities can stop you from tilting so much when your game turns into a slideshow. I'm gonna give you guys 3 levels of video settings you can use depending on how good your PC is. For console players, stick around to the end of this segment for your settings. Now, for really high-end PCs, honestly, you could have every single setting checked and running at the highest possible graphic settings. However, there are a few settings you need to turn off to improve gameplay. First, turn off weather effects. They literally just make your game look worse. You should also turn off motion blur because it makes it harder to see what's actually going on in-game. For mid-range PCs, I recommend having everything except dynamic shadows and transparent goalposts unchecked, and setting your particle detail to performance. This allows you to still have a beautiful looking game while running without any frame drops. For low range PCs, you want to have every setting unchecked except for transparent goalposts and have all your graphic settings on performance. Now for console players, this screen looks a little bit different. Now the main problem a lot of console players have with their game is input lag. For my first 200 to 300 hours I played on console and the input lag I had almost made me quit the game. However, this one setting right here may be the solution to all your problems. Turning off vertical sync almost completely reduces your input lag, so that what you do on the controller happens almost instantaneously in-game. Now, if your TV is a newer model, you most likely also have a gaming mode. Turning this on will also reduce your input lag, playing exactly the same as a PC. For video settings, you mainly just want to have weather effects off and transparent goalposts on. The other settings don't really matter. Now finally, here are some random settings scattered all around that you want to know about. First of all, in the interface tab, turning up the nameplate scale will increase the name tags of the players in-game. The reason why this is so useful is because you will be able to see other players much easier. This means you won't poop your pants when a player hidden behind the ball challenges you. In the audio tab, you can check these two boxes to play the in-game soundtrack in training and in-game. If you press play in the main menu, you can select which regions you want to play in to get less lag, and you can select which arenas you like and don't like to get more of the maps you like. Alright, we've reached the end of the settings guide. Congratulations, you now have all the resources you need to have the perfect settings to rank up beyond your wildest dreams. I hope you guys have learned something from this video, and I'm glad I could be here to help. Now, before you go, feel free to come back to this video whenever you need more settings help. And make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to help support me create great content for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Love y'all.